Hello, this is Dr. Kat Fries from Central New Mexico Community College. This is video N in a series of videos on the blood vessels. This one is the last video that discusses regulatory mechanisms of blood pressure and it focuses on the renal mechanisms. Our kidneys are actually amazing organs. We tend to think of them being the organs that produce urine, but during that process, they have impacts on our whole body pretty much, particularly on the cardiovascular system. They play a really, really important role in regulating our blood pressure. And there are, uh, we can divide the mechanisms, the renal mechanisms into direct renal mechanisms and indirect renal mechanism. So if we look at the direct renal mechanisms, and by the way, we'll look at these renal mechanisms in much greater detail when we get to the urinary system. But for now, just briefly, let's say that our blood pressure is dropping to where we have also uh, a lower blood volume entering into our kidneys. That is going to directly translate in less kidney filtration meaning that more fluid is retained in the blood, we produce ultimately less urine, and therefore we're going to bring up our blood volume and our blood pressure rises. So that's the direct mechanism. Within the indirect renal mechanisms, we can talk short-term regulation versus long-term regulation. And with regards to the short-term regulation, once again, it's going to be the sympathetic nervous system that's going to kick in in response to low blood pressure. And the kidneys are involved in this. I'm, I'm not going to into great detail here quite yet. We'll, again, leave that to the urinary system. But somehow our kidneys can actually communicate with our sympathetic nervous system to be, make it activate um, or make it become activated such that our cardiac output can be changed Our uh, level of vessel diameters can be changed to where we can impact our blood pressure. So that is short-term regulation. Remember, any time the nervous system kicks in, it's quick and fast and relatively short usually. Long-term regulation, on the other hand, relates to the release of hormones again, this time by the kidney. So here again, we see kidneys that we don't easily think of as endocrine organs acting as endocrine organs. So our kidneys are going to re release in response to a low blood pressure a hormone referred to as renin that can also act as an enzyme to ultimately uh, create or that ultimately results in angiotensin 2. And we we'll learn later on how we ultimately get to angiotensin 2. Now, we refer to this whole mechanism as the RAA mechanism, which stands for renin, for the R. The second A is angiotensin, and then the third A typically refers to aldosterone. We could actually really add a third A for ADH. So once we have angiotensin 2, angiotensin 2 increases the secretion of ADH, increases the secretion of aldosterone. And as we learned earlier, both of them are going to impact blood volume, which then, of course, is going to change our blood pressure. Angiotensin is also a potent vasoconstrictor, which can change blood pressure. And it can also feed back to the hypothalamus to where it can trigger our thirst center we drink more, we increase our blood volume, and that increases our blood pressure. Finally, let's not forget that our kidneys produce another hormone called EPO. We sometimes, we will also see kidneys increasing our production of EPO in response to low blood pressure. And of course, if we produce more EPO, that results in the production of more red blood cells. Ultimately, that produces more plasma as well, such, such that we increase our blood volume and therefore our blood pressure. So if we put the previous slide in a flow chart, then we can see that if we have a decreased blood pressure, which can be due to a decreased blood volume, a quick fix is to trigger the sympathetic nervous system, which then can impact the heart via contractility changes and heart rate changes. 
so we can increase cardiac output. The norepinephrine can also stimulate vasoconstriction, therefore peripheral resistance, and that of course is going to, both of those will bring up our blood pressure and homeostasis is restored. restored. Um, we can also talk about a long-term mechanism via the renin-angiotensin mechanism. Um, kidneys produce one hormone called renin that activates angiotensin II, which then triggers the release of both ADH and aldosterone, which, as we know, increases blood volume. We can also stimulate the, the thirst center. What is not shown here is that angiotensin II can also increase vasoconstriction, therefore increasing peripheral resistance. Finally, we can also increase our blood volume by increasing the secretion of erythropoietin in response to decreased blood pressure. So long-term mechanisms are always going to involve hormones. Short-term mechanisms are always going to involve our nervous system, particularly the sympathetic nervous system. Realize that this flowchart does not address the direct renal mechanism that I discussed in the previous slide.